Hi everyone, welcome to Adventure at Home. My name is Sun and I am an Environmental Educator Assistant with the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. Each week as part of our Adventure at Home series, we'll be bringing you creative ideas for how you can continue to recreate locally and enjoy the outdoors safely this summer no matter where you live in New York. This week's theme is Discover Nature Nearby and I'm going to show you how to start your very own nature journal. The best part about nature journaling is you can nature journal in about just about anywhere from your window, the porch, park, or even the bus. Yes, humans and pets are considered part of nature too. Nature journals come in many different forms. You can use sketchbooks, small notebooks, DIY notebooks made out of cereal boxes or pasta boxes, or even just folded pieces of paper. The type and form you use depends on what you like. For example, I tend to write and draw comfortably with them in a six inch space or smaller, so I prefer smaller pages. I usually carry around this with me when I'm commuting or running around errands, and I can remove the pages and refill them when I need to. But for this video, I'm going to be using this notebook. This is the one I use while I go on my walks or hikes. What I love about this notebook is it's completely upcycled. From the rubber band which I got from my vegetables, the cover is an old cereal box, some old junk mail envelopes, scrap pieces of paper from old sketchbooks, and even brown paper bags. I also like to measure things while I'm on my walk around the neighborhood, so I included a ruler in centimeters on the spine. That way, I don't have to carry this around with me. These are some of the supplies that you can use during your nature journaling walk. Pencil, markers, fine tip markers, tweezers, magnifying glass, erasers, and color pencils. Some people like to use pens, crayons, charcoal, or even watercolor. But for me, I like to keep my things simple. So I'm just gonna be using my notebook and a pencil. So. Let's take a walk around our neighborhood and see what we can find. Grab a blank piece of paper and a pencil and draw along with me. So right now I'm just walking around my block to see if we can find a good spot to nature journal. And I think I found a good spot too. Take a look. It's like an old abandoned playground. Let's go there. So check it out everyone. This is the raised bed that is in that abandoned playground area. And there's just so much stuff here. There's some great texture with the grasses. There is this amazing dried up moss that's growing on the concrete on all the sides. And down here, it was a little bug right there. There's several types of seeds. There's some maple seed. There's this round one, which I'm not 100% sure what it is. Some dandelion seeds right here. And there's a crow calling nearby. There's also this beautiful, I don't, I can't, I don't know if you can see it. this dandelion head that all of the seeds except for a few of them had still have been blown away but these ones are still sticking by i'd love to draw this one this really cool rock um just find it to be a really nice shape very pleasing there's also this really nice stick that i found and because it's so sunny out i'm going to show you one of my favorite uh, drawing techniques that involves shadow tracing. We're going to start out with something very simple. We're going to use this rock. The biggest tip that I have for you when you're nature journaling is to just doodle. Doodling by its nature 
is um, very quick. You are drawing fairly lightly. You are also creating a lot of lines and it's a little messy, but being messy is great when you're drawing because in nature so many things move and messy lines show um, movement. So when you're looking at this rock, you also want to find the different types of shapes that are in it. So for example, on this rock, we have a slight point to it. So it kind of looks like there's a little triangle in here and then this round part so maybe like an oval um, so we're going to use this as our warm-up piece so let's see there is a bit of a triangle and then kind of a bit of an oval just fix the shape of it You also want to ask yourself some questions while you're doodling, such as, I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of, how many, I see, smell, hear, and feel. So, for this rock, it's very smooth. So I'm gonna write that down. And based on its color, maybe a, light brown and gray light brown and gray and again don't worry about spelling or anything like that uh, your nature journal is <laughs> for you the next thing that i see that interests me is this maple seed down here i'll bring it up to you so you can see it some of you actually might call this helicopters or whirly birds. There's so many different names, but it's got a really papery thin wing, single wing, and the seed is right there. And then we have these round, I think they're types of fruit, but I kind of like the combination of these two things. So I'm going to draw this. So there's three fruits, they're circles, and this one has a bit of a stem, this one is missing its stem, and then with the maple seed, it has this pointed uh, oval, it's a bit of a curve, this side is bigger. It's going to go like this. And then it has its spine, which something like that. It's definitely darker in these areas, so I'm going to color that in. Another thing you can also do is, if you find something that is easy to trace, you can definitely trace it too is what I'm going to do right here. Oh, it even has a small little hole in it. Check that out. I think I'm going to add that to my little drawing in here. Alright, a hole. <laughs> so, when I asked myself those questions, I noticed, I can say, I noticed a hole. I noticed that it was, it feels like paper. I wonder what caused this hole right here. And it reminds me of, well, it reminds me of dragonfly wings. So I'm going to write that down too. See, when you answer these types of questions, you fill your notebook with lots of different thoughts and questions and explanations, and you don't ever have to answer them, um, but it's fun to go back and see what your train of thought was. So here's the stick that I had talked about before. It's very short, but 
I like its bumpiness and the shape. And drawing this by myself freehand, I could probably do, but there's an easier way to do it. Um, there's also a lot of detail in here, which would probably distract me from drawing it as well as I'd like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the sun to help me. And as you see here, I'm just going to place it over my paper with the sun's casting a beautiful shadow right here. And all I'm going to do is quickly sketch and trace along the shadow. And the best part of this technique is, like I said before, you, you end up with a pretty good and beautiful shape and silhouette without being distracted by all the little finer details that are in it, which allows you to notice different patterns that you wouldn't usually see. For example, here's the silhouette. I noticed that these buds go, are alternating. There's one here, one here, one here, and one here. Which I could probably notice it here, but it's not as apparent as the shadow. But now I can also look at, at more closely. What do the buds look like? They're really small. They're kind of scaly in this way. And very close. I would probably say these are the buds and they alternate. Now why is that important? Uh, you can identify trees based on how their branches are growing out, such as if it's being alternate like this, or if they're opposite like that. The next thing I want to draw is going to be the dandelion. So for this, the dandelion stem, it is kind of going up this way nice and long and its head is shaped as a circle. I'm looking at its side so it's a little bit of an oval instead. It's got these dangling looking crazy leafy bits which are called sepals which are kind of curly queuing. It's just sticking up not very graceful looking but it's an interesting texture and then it also has these little tiny little holes or pockets i guess that's where all the seeds were hanging out on we actually still have one little seed that is trying to stay on which i'm going to stick it right right here and then it has some dandelion fluff which I'm going to stick it right there and there's another one that is hanging on over here 